Welcome to the premiere of My Point. My name is Garrett Duris and I am beyond thrilled to get started. My Point is predominantly an all-male daytime talk show, so you can hear the guy's perspective of what's going on out here in these streets, yeah? <laughs> we will get deep, we will get personal, we will get vulnerable, and all in all, we finna keep it what, friends? Huh? All, all way the way real. real. All right, all right now, that'll, that'll do, that'll do. So <laughs> exactly what they said. We're going to keep it all the way real and <laughs> no script here. Yeah. All right. So today we will start off with a little segment that we like to call what's good. All right. When we will talk about all the latest news or at least anything that we want to. So <laughs> we'll let you know what's good. All right. And as the season goes on, we're going to be doing personal segments of things we hold near and dear to our hearts for the benefit of your entertainment. And we will also be bringing in some special guests. So I cannot wait for the season to, you know, grow. So let's get it popping, all right? With today's episode, all right, shall we? Let's prepare ourselves mentally for what's good. Uh What's what? What's good? What's, what's, good, good, what's hey, new? What's hey, good? What's hey, new? What's hey, good? What's, what's new? new? When you're bored at the house and tired of trying to make a dollar, gather some friends and in the end make a winner. What's new? What's hey, good? What's hey, new? What's hey, good? Hey, what's hey, new? What's hey, good? What's hey, new? Hey, All right, team, let's get going. Hey, yo, Mikey, what's good? Hey, G. Hey, everybody. Well, first and foremost, happy premiere day. It is September 3rd, and it is a lovely day outside. Also, it is Virgo season, so for all my Virgos, happy Virgo season. And G, also, happy early birthday to you. Thank you. Yes, September 5th, everybody. If you'd like to shout me out, go ahead and give me a nice shout out. You're definitely, you're definitely allowed to do that if you want. But also, before me... Happy belated birthday to you, Harrison. Didn't you just celebrate a birthday? Oh, thank you so much. I did. It was on August 30th. But uh, after you, I think we have another Virgo birthday. You so sure do. Yes, you better believe it, Harrison. My birthday is September 10th. Big 23 coming up. Okay, age. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at all this Virgo energy, right, guys? Which brings me to my point. Let's talk about Zodiac Prejudice. Now, Zodiac Prejudice is something I see on Twitter and Instagram and all forms of social media all the time. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of hate speech towards certain Zodiacs, this Zodiac, that Zodiac, especially my near and dear Zodiac to my heart, Scorpio. Now, Zodiac, your Zodiac sign is nothing that you can control. Right. So I see it on, this, on the lines of racism and sexism and things of that nature. Now, I understand that your zodiac sign is called almost like personality traits, and you know, race doesn't have to do anything with your personality traits or uh, sexuality or gender. But my point is that it is something you can't control, yet people are being discriminated for it. People will have their opinions like, oh, just because I'm a Scorpio, you're not going to want to talk to me. You're not going to want to interact with me. You're not going to want to do this to that with me. And so that's my point. Mm hmm feel that anybody want to like comment on that like yeah i mean i get it that's kind of crazy the fact that like you know like i'm a, i'm born in october i'm a libra you know libra gang what's up what's up what's up but uh you know i feel like all this stuff is just i don't want to say it's a joke or anything like that but at the end of the day it's like for our own person you know these characteristics that we're like supposed to be i mean they don't really mean anything if I want to, you know, I'm supposed to be wishy-washy and things like that. And I mean, I am. But if I didn't want to be, you know, I don't have to do that. I could be, I could stick to the point, do my thing. And that's it. I mean, at the end of the day, I think it's what you make it. It shouldn't really have too much of a say in, you know, oh, I don't like this person because they're a Scorpio or 
I don't like this person because they're very, you know, they talk too much and stuff like that, you know? It's just one of those things where, uh, you know, sometimes it's kind of true, sometimes, you know, sometimes y'all talk a lot, but you know, and, but no, I'm just playing, I'm just playing, I'm playing, I'm playing, but uh, that's, that's just how I feel about it. True. I don't like being put in a box when someone knows that I'm a Scorpio. I think it's interesting when I'm like, oh, guess what sign I am? And then I say I'm a Scorpio and they're like, ooh. Or they're like, oh my God, I love Scorpios. And it's just like, I'm just a person. Like, and I'll say, you know, religion works for some people. Zodiac and astrology works for some people. I think if it works for you, then that's good. If it works for you, it works for you. But it just doesn't make too much sense to me why people would do that. I'm not even gonna lie to you, Mikey. Um, so, um, what you guys haven't seen, but like during the rehearsal period for my point, um, <laughs> when Mikey had brought this subject up, I was definitely one of those pers- like one of those people that when you said that you were a Scorpio, I was like, what are you? Like, cause I was like, that just doesn't seem right. <laughs> and I feel so bad for saying that just because I know the bad rap that um, Scorpios have, which plays into what you all were saying. It shouldn't define who you are. And um, just because they have, not they as in Scorpios, but like they as in any Zodiac sign, just because they say this about that doesn't mean that, you know, they have to act that way. And I think you are, I don't know if this is a compliment or not, but you're a, a great example of that, <laughs> Mikey. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah. However, um, I, I do believe that, um, what they say about um, thine Virgos, I do kind of believe that they are kind of very accurate. <laughs> because Isaiah, you said something about us talking a lot. Look at me now. All right, I'm talking a lot. <laughs> but, <laughs> but like, I feel like that's actually very true about us. And there's a lot of things that the Zodiac, whatever astrology things say, those, all those things on Instagram and Twitter, a lot of things that they say that I relate to. I'm like, oh. Like, are you inside my mind right now? Are you, what are you, what are you doing? Like, yeah, that's how I act. I'm a, I'm a whole Virgo. So like, what about the um, slim chance or probably for us Virgos, the complete chance that everything kind of lines up? Yeah. I mean, sometimes I like, I feel like I see things on like social media and I'm just like, huh, that does, that does seem like me. Like that does seem like some, some, Virgo stuff really aligns with me, but I don't, I really don't, I never really learn much about Virgos and astrology or like anybody's astrological sign. It never really like spoke to me in that manner. Um, so yeah, I, I, I don't really, yeah. I don't know a thing about any sign except for Virgo. Right? <laughs> I have, I, have no, I didn't even, I didn't even realize I was a Virgo until I think even college people start to actually bring that kind of stuff up because really? it put probably yeah yeah G started talking about something I'm like, oh, yeah, oh, I my. guess I should figure out what my sign yeah I actually think I was like you're so, wait are you a Virgo when you said your birthday you was like yeah <laughs> I will say everything I've read about uh, Virgos I have been it makes sense. Like, yeah, I do like to talk. And there are every, I've never read a thing about Virgos. I'm like, well, that doesn't describe me at all. There's always some way I can connect to it. And then you see those things on Snapchat. It's like, oh, what's going to happen to your sign this week? And like one year, one week it said Virgos, you'll get astronomically uh, richer or something like that. And I'm like, well, I sure hope so. <laughs> but it didn't happen. So they're just, so I feel like with anything like that, I take it with a grain of salt just because I really don't know much about it. And you know, uh, so th- it's hard for me to connect to something I just don't know much about. That's one of my things is that, like, I feel like some of those posts you see on Instagram, like, where a picture, they have a picture and then the zodiac sign in the middle and then they have, like, different traits. I feel like you could put any zodiac sign in the middle and it might apply to that person. When I see, like, oh, just Scorpio things on Snapchat, I have a hard time relating sometimes. It's just, like, I don't get angry like this at people. Like, I don't do this or that. I don't really know my trait. I know some of my traits about being a Scorpio and being passionate. And I do see that, but um, some other things just don't add up for me. Yeah. And it's like, how, how accurately do those things, do those posts like actually align with true astronomical signs, astrological signs, the word. <laughs> <laughs> the word. 
astrological signs, right? That's yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, I'm I'm with Jack. I I I know very <laughs> little about it, but like when I see things like that on on social media, I'm like, how true is that? Like, how much research did this person who made this image mm -hmm. do to actually find this stuff out? So, mm -hmm. and most times they probably didn't do any research. They're probably like they were mean to me, so. Yeah, <laughs> gonna continue. like imagine saying like oh i don't want to date that guy i don't like asians because or i don't like white people or black people because that one boyfriend i had in seventh grade was so loud and now i just hate all of those people like yeah. what yeah that could, yeah that's, that's kind of yeah. that's kind of yeah that's kind of accurate and i also want to say this too because I'm not, I'm not too keen or too up to speed on everything um, astrology, you know what I mean, with all these zodiac signs. I grew up in a household of um, the Queen Scorpio, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I'm very, I feel like I know, hmm, how can I say this? I, I know Virgos because I looked into that information. Um, and that actually, yeah, it happened around college. I was like, hmm, let me be, let me get into this a little bit more. And then Scorpios and Aries, just because that's like in the household. And um, I love my mother so much. But um, she's, she's just really passionate. That's it. She's really passionate. So when, when it's something like a little disagreement and we, you know, honestly, growing up, you shouldn't have a disagreement with your parents. They're just like, they're, that's it's what they say and that's it but like I definitely noticed when we had those disagreements that she was very passionate about that subject and I think it stems from the passion that is that Scorpio energy in action yeah and that is your point <laughs> all right okay I like that well shoot let's change up the gears a little bit guys you know I got a topic you know that's near and dear to my heart okay. you know if you didn't rock on me, I don't know if I, I don't know how I feel about you with this. But uh, <laughs> you know, Chipotle versus Taco Bell. You know, most of y'all who know me, you know, I'm a Taco Bell boy till I die. You know, <laughs> I'm, 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 I remember like one time in college, I drove like two hours just to get some, you know, Chipotle because that's the way to go. You know, if you ain't doing Chipotle, then you know that Chipotle you... is my life. <laughs> that's my, that's me. You know, that's me. You know, I, I Taco Bell is like if you want to get sick. You know, go talk about if you want to be a broke boy. I'm just kidding, not a broke boy, but if you want to be a broke boy, kind of, you know, go talk about you no know, Chipotle's for the, you know, yeah. the well established. No, nah, I'm just kidding. It, it, you know, it's, just, it's like if you want some good food, you know, real food, get some Chipotle. That's how I feel. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Sorry, I didn't want to cut you off, Mikey. What were you about to say? Well, I. I I've had Taco Bell once or twice. I'm a, I'm one of those weird people who gets tacos, hard shell tacos from Chipotle. I really do like them a lot. They're very delicious. They taste more quality to me than Taco Bell. And I don't know, the Chipotle vibe is just nice. Like you're sitting at home reading the Chipotle cup or the Chipotle bag and you're like, oh wow, I never knew any of this. <laughs> but the things I do get from Taco Bell are the Baja Blast freezes during happier hour. Happier hour is amazing. One dollar medium Baja Blast freeze, yes. Oh, no, no. Okay, I, I'll give you that. Yeah, and now I um I noticed you said like I I was smiling at what and I'm like oh yeah and that's so true but I was like wait they have things on their bags at Chipotle. Yeah, they got like a whole like text like a whole paragraph or two. I'm not sure what they say, but they got like you can just sit there and read it. Like it's like better than reading the back of a cereal box when you're re oh. when you're eating cereal. Let me tell you this: <laughs> uh, when I get that Chipotle. It does not hit the bag that quick, you know what I'm saying? So I like I, do, I never I never really look like even if I'm taking it home, I'm just like, <laughs> even as I'm driving, I'm like oh, okay. So I never really have time to look at that um the bag. So now I'm gonna do that. Definitely. Thank you, Becky. Of course. There is a glaring omission from this list, and that is my friend Mo, whom. I would take any. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna stop you right there. I'm gonna stop. You. We're not talking about Mo. Oh, oh, I'm talking about Mo. Who is she? Who owns the Mexican restaurant named Mo's, which is by far my favorite of the three options. No. I have a very high tolerance. 
for Mexican food in general. So I don't really like any of these places. But if I had to pick one of the three, it would be Mo's. Also, I lived in Farmville, which has one place of the three, which is Mo's. So you have to get an acquired taste for it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I stand strong next to Mo's. I feel like if you're going to go to Mo's, you might as well just go to Taco Bell because <laughs> you're going to blow your stomach up anyway. Might as well. <laughs> I'm not driving too much, right? But I can. I'm gonna blow my stomach up either way, so I might as well just go up the street to Bo's, then drive out of Farmville to go to Taco Bell, or not blow your stomach up at all and drive a 45 minute drive to Lynchburg and get you some Chipotle, or <laughs> go for five minute to Richmond and get you some Chipotle, or Happy. hold my stomach to an even higher standard and just drive to an actual Mexican restaurant <laughs> and get some actual yeah. Mexican food. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you could, but like, yeah. I had Moe's one time. It was just not it for me. It was nowhere near Chipotle quality. I don't think I would drive forty five <laughs> minutes. Actually, I might drive forty five minutes for Chipotle if I was really feeling it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. They got some restaurants yeah. though, and Mexican restaurants there in Farmville. Yeah. Not anymore. They're both closed. Oh, oh, really? Oh, yeah. Wow. After uh, they both closed in April, I want to say. They couldn't handle the COVID stuff. Look, Taco Bell does have the advantage on the pricing. I will give them oh, that. That's true. That's 100%. true. That's true. And yeah. the advantage was like, I feel like for me, it was like in high school, it was Taco Bell for me. Because yeah. yeah. like those, those, those late night 1 a.m. Taco Bell trips to get <laughs> like quesadillas, tacos. <laughs> what, what was it? Um, the double i i can't it was like a double duper or something like that i don't know but <laughs> it was like you just get so much food for so little money but now i'm grown okay grown my palate is a little more sophisticated okay palate <laughs> so i prefer the complex flavors of a, of a chipotle taco Ooh, Ooh all right okay. tell me about it tell me about how, how do you fix it let walk us on the journey so when I go, it, it really depends on a feeling. It's, mm -hmm. all about today. Want, it's all about whether I want the, tor the tortilla or whether I want it all just in a bowl. If I get a bowl, it's going to be white rice, mm. sometimes carnitas, or, or, or just, just carnitas, or both, both. Sometimes both. I, like, I like the black beans. I like the mild salsa. I like the cheese. I like the guacamole. I like a lot of it. It's all good. Ooh. Oh, right. Taco Bell, I'm like, I could go for like a few things on the menu, but then they took away the, the Fiesta potatoes and like all the potato options. Mm. Right? Uh, it wasn't the reason that they like cut so much of their menu. I don't know. I wouldn't know. Yeah. I don't exactly. know. <laughs> Taco Bell just be on some stuff, guys. I remember one time, it was like a couple of summers ago, you know, I was, you know, I don't know what's wrong with me. You know, maybe I was sick or something like that. But I went to Taco Bell. <laughs> and uh, yo, tell me why Taco Bell ran out of tortillas. I went to the window. I said, uh -huh. yo, can I get a uh, soft taco? They said, no, 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 no tortillas here. I was like, bro, this is it. I'm done with Taco Bell. No more of that. No more. And then, uh, ever since then, Chipotle for me. That's it. Chipotle? Yeah. And like, I grew up um, in good old Ashland, Virginia for a good seven years of my life. And I remember going to Taco Bell once. And um, the meat was disgusting. Um, the horse meat? Yeah, yeah, horse. I heard it was dog. Either way, it's nasty. All right. And once I heard that, I could never look at it the same. And then I had a contract at the prizery in South Boston, Virginia. Shout out. And Harrison was with me. And wasn't much out there, but what was there was a Taco Bell. And that's when I tried their breakfast thing. And that was fine. And I'm just going to need for Chipotle to take it to the next step and give me a little bit of breakfast. All right. I, I think, I think that's the next step. Get rid of that white cheese. All right. Get rid of the queso and bring in some, um, that I haven't tried yet. Why am I so aggressive? I'm oh. sorry. But, <laughs> but get us, give us some, you know, breakfast. Breakfast yeah. taco. Yeah. So if you're watching this Chipotle for one, um, sponsor us. <laughs> and also, <laughs> And also, you know, and talk about, yeah, you can sponsor us too. I mean, but um, <laughs> definitely, definitely switch to breakfast. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I do that. Nah. Uh, nah. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, 
Stay tuned, everybody at home. We're going to take a very, very short stretch break. So we're going to throw in some commercials right here. Um, very, very short commercials. So stay tuned. Okay. All, all I'm going to say, and I, I, I wish I had said this and it just came into my head, but comparing Taco Bell to Chipotle, Chipotle is like yeah. a, Compared yeah. uh, Olive Garden to Pizza Hut. <laughs> yeah. And you didn't hear that line. Yeah. And Moe's. Oh, I wish I had spoken on Moe's. I was so mad that you brought that up. The most nasty, dark and evil, disgraceful, dirty, detrimental, drugged up, genius, super smart, it looks like they'd be on crack, influenced by LSD, it's just a train wreck, how, how like detrimental it is to your brain, the high is just so intense, that does not sound healthy, that seems crazy, I don't know, I really don't know what's going on. Back. Welcome back to my point. All right. Did you miss us? Yes. No. All right. Let's, let's not talk about it. Well, we are back. All right. And let's talk about what's good. All right. Or what's not good. So coronavirus. Um, let's address the big old elephant, zebra, giraffe, all of that that's in the room, which is you, Miss Miss Rona. All right. So before you came around, I felt like I was set. I felt like everything was okay. You know what I mean? Um, I wasn't, I wasn't crying. Like everything was just fine. But <laughs> you showed up and everything kind of came to a halt. That being said, career-wise, I felt like everything was moving smoothly for me. I got finally got cast in two Richmond shows, Richmond, Virginia shows. That's like the Broadway of Virginia, if you will. All right, like. If you're in a Richmond show, and Harrison can attest to this, if you, when you're in a Richmond show, you have it, all right? You know, you're in, all right? And I say that because Harrison is definitely in. He's a great, amazing actor. But I finally got cast in two shows, y'all, in Richmond. And they got canceled because guess what? Miss Rona. I got cast in a short feature film. They are actually starting um, production again. Shout out to Recollection. But that was at a halt. Everything was at a halt. I was going to try to get on to a little TV show as an extra. Everything. I was going to New York to perform again. Y'all, I was stressed. Stressed, but yet I'm still blessed. But your boy was stressed. So has this affected you guys career-wise at all? Has it set you back a little bit? Like, tell, talk to me. What's going on? Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of in the same boat as you, uh, Garrett. I mean, I had I had a couple contracts lined up as well, and everything kind of got pushed back to next year. And, you know, I don't even know if it's going to stay that way because, you know, it seems like it's not – this whole thing is not going to end by the beginning of 2021. So it's kind of it's it's kind of depressing, but also you know I I got engaged uh, oh. this past February, and you know for everybody who doesn't know, um, yeah. So I mean it's it's really like this whole virus has really like cut down on our wedding planning. We can't do the things that we initially wanted to do. So it really sucks. It kind of sucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I mean it's one of those things where like. I mean, I had a job before, so I'm working from home now, but, you know, I was trying to move and with all this stuff happening, it kind of just delayed the process of moving to a different state and get everything going from there because people stopped hiring and things like that. So that's one of those things. And even just like outside of work, I was trying to travel. I was trying to go to Tokyo this year and uh, yeah, that didn't happen. That got delayed. It's, it's been a heck of a ride. Thank you for COVID. Appreciate you. Yeah. Nothing too bad has happened to me uh, in the regards to career. I was 
on unemployment for five weeks because one week I had a Corona scare. I lost my smell and taste, and that's one of the symptoms of Corona. Mm-hmm. I never got a test because I, I guess the early stages of Corona, that wasn't a confirmed symptom. So I stayed home for two weeks from work, made that unemployment money, which was great because I got paid to sleep and do other things. But, um, and then I also had another Corona scare just because, or not a scare, my dad had actually come home from New York because he went to New York because uh, my grandfather actually passed away because of COVID. But he also had uh, underlying a lot of other things going on too, but he was 86, 87. So yeah, he just, he's, he got affected by it. So yeah, I, I'm, I personally kind of got affected by COVID and how many people, I don't know how many people have lost somebody because of it, but I mean, it really kind of just nailed in the hammer for me for just like practicing the CDC guidelines and regulations, but I did enjoy unemployment. I will say that. <laughs> Yeah, I, it hasn't affected, uh, I, I mean, thankfully, um, I have not lost anyone uh, to it, uh, which also sort of makes it a little uh, less real, I think. I think once you actually, once G told me that he'd lost someone to it, it made it a lot more real than just sitting at home and there's something happening, but I don't know, I don't know anyone who's getting affected by it, so I'm just sitting at home. You know, until you know someone, I think, that loses someone to it, it makes it sort of more of an annoyance and it is so annoying but until you know some of that happens i had a um internship i just graduated this may from college i had an internship with disney lined up and i it was it's it was interesting and kind of difficult mentally to go from one of the few people who know what they're doing after you graduate college to joining most everyone in not having any plan at all because your original plan gets messed up you know so uh until and disney didn't even cancel it until like end of may early june so up until the summer i was like yeah i'm just gonna move down there to in august and everything and we'll see what happens from that you know so until you know you lose a job or you lose someone or your friend loses someone it makes it so uh much more real i think yeah i agree and yeah so like as I said earlier, him to passing away really nailed in some of the CDC guidelines, which brings me to my next point is wearing a mask versus not wearing a mask. Something that had changed in my life, or not changed, but I have to do at work now. I wear a mask about eight hours a day, seven to eight hours a day, take it off during lunch. But, and I'm in a high volume area at my job, so I have to wear it. And I see a lot of people complaining about wearing a mask and like, oh, it's going to screw up my breathing. Oh, this, that, and the third. Like, I can't wear it for that long. I wear a cloth mask for eight hours a day. If I can do it, I swear a lot of people, other people can. It's just, to me, even, I don't know any of the science behind it. I haven't done any research. I haven't looked at any sources. But look, if I can stop the spread, if I can help, if I can make somebody not die, somebody's grandpa not die, somebody's grandma not die, that I will do that. I will sacrifice this. Or I will sacrifice not wearing a mask. I will wear a mask and I will try to prevent people's deaths and try to stop the spread. I, that's exactly it. You know, that's the thing with the mask. You know, I get it can be annoying. You're muted. My fault, my fault, Isaiah. Um, go go wow. back to what you were saying. I was trying to pin your video and I muted you. So, um, <laughs> it's um, all good. Let, Jay does not want to hear what you have to say, Isaiah. Yeah, I know. I was like, uh, the fuck? Oh, forget it. No, I don't know, forget masks. Don't wear them. Masks are stupid. <laughs> yeah, no. no. All right. So, do you remember wh- how you started? I'm probably just going to like this. All right, cool. Oh, you told about the sentence. Yeah. Oh. Oh yeah, I'll just go. Yeah, I'll just start out on that. It was yeah. off the top of the dome. All right, yeah. I think I'm you've been sure, yeah, but... you were agreeing with something Mikey just said about the um if he yeah. can do whatever he could. Then all right. Well, go ahead, action. Yeah, so Mikey, I completely agree with you. You know, it's like, you know, at the end of the day, I'm not wearing a mask all the time, you know, just because I'm at home most of the time. I work from home. I'm not have to deal with people. But when I'm out, you know, I'm young. I'm probably not going to get sick. I'm probably not going to die if I'm being honest with you. 
but you know, it's for the other people, you know, like my dad has pre-existing health conditions. Uh, my girlfriend has pre-existing health conditions. It's like one of those things where I have people who, who are my life important to me additions, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, at the end of the day, if you have to wear a mask for maybe like a couple of hours a day, you know, for the, not people who are working, but the people who are like just shopping, going out to eat, things like that, just wear your mask. It's not that hard, you know? But again, that's my feelings on the idea. What else y'all have to say? Um, I would definitely like to say this as far as <clears throat> all this wearing the mask ordeal. I believe it's very important. Um, I, I can't remember a time where I was like, that's crazy, that's stupid anyway, because I always was like, oh, lo I'm such a germaphobe anyway. If you know me, I don't mess with anybody's germs, all right? So I just, I wanted to kind of have on a mask. Do I like it? No, but it's definitely going to help. And um, like Jack mentioned, yeah, I, I lost my uncle and also to you, Mikey, I'm sorry that you lost a family member to it also um it sucks because it's real like it hit, it definitely hits home and it's like all right this crap is real and my uncle he lost his life because the school wasn't taking things seriously he was um, an employee at a school and like during the summer they had to come in and whatnot and they didn't they weren't taking things seriously they no one was required to wear masks they weren't required to have their temperature checked and everything when they um, walked through the door. But there was a person who had the virus at the school, wasn't wearing a mask. He overheard about it, like he heard about it. He went and got tested because he realized he was feeling a little sick and he got tested and lo and behold, he had it. And he went up, like he had his ups and his downs and he was fighting that thing um, the best he could, but he just couldn't fight it anymore. And like, being there with my uncle throughout that whole process, it hurt, but also it made me realize it is very serious. And for people to not even care about like safety precautions in a, like in a school level is beyond crazy to me. So definitely wear the mask 24 seven, you know what I'm saying? When, when you can, when you're out and about, because it's, it's doing something, it's, it's doing, something whether you believe it or not and really quick let me let me give y'all a little lesson not y'all but everybody at home when you had this on right see all right make sure it's covered right here like this like that like so like that you see what i'm saying and yeah, don't like think yes not like this yes not like that not like, not this. like this even though you might be blind to the fact of why you had to wear a mask, <laughs> you don't want to wear it like this, all right? Or not like that. But we're going to wear it like, like this, all right? Just like that, all right? And when you're in a store, don't think that this protects everything. If you sneeze or if you cough and you're just like, <laughs> or a chew, don't do that. That's nasty, all right? Because, yes, it protects a little bit of something, all right? But something is still, something is going somewhere, all right? I've seen too many people right beside me just cough and just sneeze without covering their mouth because they think this is doing everything. Um, this helps, but it, but it ain't God. It ain't Jesus. It ain't all of them. It ain't the Holy Spirit in everybody. Uh -huh. So do your part and be a little smart, all right? And <laughs> wash your hands, too. Don't forget to wash them up. Yeah. And I just want to give a shout out to my school, um, the new community school. Um, we're going back. And um, at first I was very nervous about that because like my dad, diabetic and everything, like family members are prone to it. But they are doing the darn thing. They have, they're bringing in like this plexiglass for us to stand behind. They have um, face shields for us, like the glass face shields. And they're providing masks, gloves, Lysol, wipes, everything. They're going to have staff members wipe down the rails in between class, um, the shifts of the classes and whatnot. They're really doing good. You can only walk up certain steps, walk down, um, keeping things spaced out. So I'm just hoping that we'll be able to definitely put these rules into action very well. And we spread out these classes. It's hybrid right now. So some students will be here, some won't. 
So I just want to give a shout out to them because some people have chose to do that, but um, to go back to school and whatnot, but I feel good that our school will be safe. So everybody send out positive vibes to everybody, go, all the kids going back to school, everybody that is constantly working. Thank you to our, you know, the people in the forefront that's dealing with this COVID. Just keep everybody in your prayers and your positive thoughts and the good vibes in the universe. Just do whatever you're doing because it's a tough time, yeah? Yeah. And also I want to comment on one thing Jack said. Um, you said Disney was canceled. Um, like they canceled the internship in the May or early June and the theater of in me directly went to Dear Evan Hansen. Stop it. I knew you were going to say It's a perfect afternoon we shared. Yeah. In Disney the... canceled all my plans. I oh. wanted to <laughs> yeah. jump and end my stand. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, musical theater jokes. Go ahead and look it up, friends. Right. Yeah, but do we have anything else we want to say about this subject, or how are we feeling? I actually have one last thing to say. Um, if you're if you're one of those people who chooses not to wear a mask in public, do not make fun of or be rude to people who are wearing a mask because those people are choosing to do the right thing and be decent people while you're being kind of a jerk. So, you know, I've had some people stare at me in the in the food line parking lot for wearing a mask. So don't do that. That be food line. And that's all I got to say. Wow. Mm, let them know. What did they look like? Let's call them out. <laughs> <laughs> he was old and bald. And he just stared at me beside his car, and I started coming towards him with a shopping cart to, like, put my cart away. And he jumped in his car and ran away right as I was about to say, excuse me, can I help you? Yeah, let him know. <laughs> these That's people, wild. These people, they're, they're no joke, and I, I just don't get it. You know? No, you are the joke. What were we saying, Mike? People that don't wear masks make it a big point of why they don't wear masks. And I'm like, I'll, I'll hear you out, like... You know, everyone's opinion, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. But, like, you know, I don't think it's about controlling the population. I don't think it's about having this control over people. Like, I think it's just to stop the spread of COVID-19. <laughs> yeah. And I just feel like very people who are against it are very outspoken. And yeah. I guess people who are with it are very outspoken, too. Wow. Mm. I will say that I did not wear a mask until probably – the end of April when I came back home after I graduated from Longwood just because I didn't it, it again goes to the realness thing that especially in Farmville it's like okay nobody has it here so I'm not going to wear a mask but it, once you see once the death toll goes to a yeah. certain number it's like oh okay I'll wear a mask because it just comes to, <laughs> I feel like this comes to a point where you're like oh I guess it, it just has to be done at this point mm -hmm. yeah I used to play a game called Plague Inc it, you yes. Just, yes. You you tried to develop <laughs> a vibe. <laughs> you tried to kill the world with This is really real life play game. This is crazy. Yeah. Well, that that took me back right there. <laughs> I started also, playing what a it weird game. Like, I started hey, playing it again. To kill the world as fast as possible. <laughs> oh my goodness. And hey, you said you started playing it again. Yeah, at the start of COVID, I would be at work. <laughs> And just playing it like, oh my god, like what's going on? You can on? name the disease. <laughs> COVID nineteen. Let's check. Start in Europe. <laughs> That's oh my goodness. But I think just wear your mask, people. Yeah. Yeah, let's do our best to do that and let's uplift people who um don't see the need because it's okay. Um we can all have that turning point where we're like, you know what? Like like what you said, Jack. I'm gonna wear a mask, okay? It's okay to have that. Like if you haven't like today, like starting today, your life can change if you just call eight oh four three like like you can definitely start now. You can start today and it's not too late. And we won't judge you, all right? As long as you I mean, even if you judge us, we won't judge you, all right? Well, all that being said, guys, we are just about out of time. Not just about, we are out of time for today's very first episode. Okay, let's give it a little round of applause. Hey. So, yeah, we're very ding, 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 ding. shout out to Brianna LaFrada for <laughs> that. That's hers. All right, but um, yeah, so 
great first premiere, guys. All right. Uh, and I just want to say thank you to all of my co-hosts for agreeing to be a part of this. I could not have done the, Of course, I couldn't have done the show without you guys. So I really appreciate you guys. And I love you guys. All right. So everybody at home, remember, 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 subscribe and tune in next Thursday, September 10th at 6 p.m. for a new episode. Until next time, peace, love, and hair grease. See y'all later. Peace. This is my